Chapter 36, The White Fuzz. Oh my God. Michael ran over to the window too and saw black smoke coming out of a building across the street. And there was a whole bunch of monkey fuckers. Another grill gang name in all its glorious stupidity. Dancing like crazy cycles, attacking tenants with bats that were running out of the building in desperation. Michael had to get Latoya to safety. It would be inhuman of him to leave her here now like this. Plus, this was all beginning to remind Michael of the night he had run into a burning building to try and save his sister. Okay, let's go. The two ran out of the apartment and dashed into the elevator, then got to the garage level and finally reached Latoya's Pinto. And then Michael realized something. He had never driven a car before. A motorcycle, yeah, but living in New York, owning a car is more of a burden than an asset. The two got into the car and Michael felt funny sitting in the passenger seat. <clears throat> now, I'll call Michael old-fashioned and it wasn't that he thought Latoya couldn't drive well enough being a woman, but I would just feel a lot more comfortable if I was at the helm. Oh, come on, cried out Latoya. The car wasn't starting and from the sound of it, Michael could tell the starter was going out. Not now, not now, not now, pleaded Latoya with the cars. It continuously refused to work. Michael then noticed the Harley parked next to the car and then looked over at Latoya as to say, how about we take a ride on that bad boy there? No, if you're going to hotwire anything, let's take this Toyota. But Michael was already out of the Pinto and on top of the chopper. This was actually Michael's old criminal trade when he was in the Shamrocks, jacking choppers and selling them to the chop shops. And most of all, Michael just loved pissing off all the Hell's Angel wannabe tough guy types. The motorheads that came with the job, taking their wheels and driving off at the last second as they came running out, cursing him out in their redneck yammer. You know, there's a perfectly good Toyota next to my car, right? The chopper's engines growled. Too late, said Michael, smiling up at Latoya. Latoya reluctantly hopped on back and they were off. And then, wouldn't you know it, to Michael's luck, some redneck did pop out of the blue and started cussing too. <laughs> a cross-eyed, shirtless, shoeless man that had a sagging gut covered with white fuzz, who began bellyaching at Michael faster than he could check himself, firing off his 12-gauge in the air as a warning, as he cursed away. You fuck, you fuck, you, I'll kill you, die! Yeehaw, asshole, put on some fucking shoes. And Michael was now feeling better again. As they got out of the garage and onto the street, a few of the monkey fuckers then took notice. Are you fucking kidding me? Thought Michael as he saw three of the idiots rushing in their direction. They had no weapons. They weren't driving any vehicles. But it seemed as if though they still wanted to play chicken. <laughs> or play turkey in their case. At first the thought of running them over made him a bit skittish. But then Michael thought, rompus pompus, you want some, come get some. Michael then roared up the engines and took off, no longer feeling any hesitation in running them over clean. As the two parties rushed at each other, two of the idiot monkey fuckers had then finally seemed to have grasped the predicament that they were heading in. If you put roughly 800 pounds of metal, not counting me and Latoya adding another 300 pounds into the mix, up against their scrawny 140 pound fleshy asses each, 10 times out of 10, the metal would win. 11 times out of 10. And so as the two of them got out of the way, the third one, who I'd say is the Nobel Prize winning gentleman of their guild, screamed then at the very last second before the collision, Michael rammed into the jerk off as the jerk off flew up high, then threw right into a street lamp post and practically got tied up around it like a pretzel would. And to the side of that, the rest then started jumping up and down like hyped up monkeys would in a zoo that had been dosed with some acid even making ape-like noises as Michael began to think that name was meant in a literal sense. Michael, you could have killed those guys. What were you? No, I wouldn't have, interrupted Michael with a satisfied smirk. Latoya then noticed how Michael wasn't riding in the direction she wanted out of town and was driving towards Manhattan. Michael, where are we going? asked Latoya nervously. Michael didn't respond. Michael, this isn't the way out of the city. Michael, I don't want to go to uptown. Put on some fucking shoes.